Robin, we Ooh. gotta get you a ring light. I have one. I just don't use it. How's oh, that? That's great. Go get it. What do no. you doing? Robin. That's gonna be way worse. Way worse. Here, look. I'll just this is about even lighting. <laughs> <laughs> this is even right now. Uh, we can just we can just cut Robin right out of here. Yeah. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us again here on Soap Dish. Today I have my lovely co-host Jazz from Rogue Mafia Grooming Co. And our special guest, round of applause, is Alyssa from Evergreen Essential. Hello. Hey Alyssa, thanks so much for joining us. I really love that you're here. I've been like <laughs> silently, covertly stalking you over the last several months. And it's great to be able oh. to just, like, actually talk to you. Well, that's exciting because <laughs> you seem like you're much more talented than I am. So if you're stalking me, I I'm thrilled. <laughs> I stalk people who create things that I think are beautiful. So oh, <laughs> talent, irregardless. Like if I think it's gorgeous, great. I will be watching everything that you do. Well, that's my goal. Gorgeous. Yes. Sweet. Well, let's just dive on in. I would love to hear how you got started with soap making and like what is your story behind the first batch of soap that you made? Okay. Um, it starts a little bit earlier than that. Um, the first thing I ever made was actually a salve. My husband was working in a steel mill and had to wear rubber gloves or um, leather gloves all the time. So his knuckles were like cracked and bleeding and we tried all this stuff and it didn't work. So I started um, researching like herbal things and I made a salve out of all these herbs that I had researched and his hands healed up. And um, to me, that was like this miraculous thing. Like I didn't know plants could do that. Right. So um a few probably like a year later it was time to make another batch and like a month it was time to make another batch but basically what had happened was I had a manic episode we didn't know that I was bipolar and I had this huge manic episode and it um it wrecked me for like almost a year and I was like I was all over the place and I've always been really artistic and I just have always do dove into a lot of different things. And it was like right after my manic episode, we were like, oh, okay, well, we need more salve. Like, oh, okay, cool. So I started to make the salve. And then I just, I thought about what else can I do with these herbs? Like I had been researching herbs and essential oils. And like I said, I was manic. So I was like researching and had all these ideas that were coming up. <laughs> That's and my normal state. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So then once I had all these ideas, I was like, what do I do with it? And I had years of buying natural soap for my little sister because she got like rashes and just horrible things from commercial soap. Um, so it was like kind of a natural transition. I was like, I want to do something with these herbs. My sister needs this stuff. Why don't I just try it on my own? Um, and yeah, I bought a kit from Brambleberry and I don't have any more of those because I, this is, this is actually pretty funny. So like being manic, you're all over the place and it's hard to focus. So I was like really into like, this needs to be done the way it has to be done. So I was like mm -hmm. following the directions and it came with a packet of calendula and it was a really big packet, but it didn't dawn on me. I don't have to use the whole thing. So I was like, well, if this is what they gave me, this is what I have to use. So the whole thing of soap had this huge pile of calendula on top. <laughs> oh no. It was so hideous. And so once it set up, I was like, I can't. I don't, I don't know what to do with this. It's hideous. I like, so I was like trying to pick off as much as I could and stuff, but that was my first soap I made. And then I started, um, I, I don't know where I got the idea. I think I had wanted to use oregano in something like mm -hmm. I, I read something about, oh, it's, um, it's healing for some things. And it's so I wanted to actually, it's used very well against viruses and, um, bacteria from my infections. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to use that in a recipe and I don't know. I just, I took the essential oils that I had and I just started smelling stuff and I came up with this little concoction. It was just oregano and lavender, but I love the way it smelled. So I made that and then I had some family and friends try it and everybody loved the soap and I was kind of hooked on doing it. And it just kind of involved, evolved into me having this habit, this hobby, and it was helping keep, keep me focused because I was still like, like I said, it was like a year of being manic. So I was still all over the place and I just needed an outlet. And I had been painting and writing music and doing macrame and just like doing all of these things and nothing was keeping me focused. Mm -hmm. um, so we came up with a business plan. It was a very mild business plan, but this is 
I've never, ever wanted to own a business in my entire life. Like my husband has had all these ideas and I've always shut them down so hard because I didn't want to own a business. I don't want that responsibility, but I wanted to do something with my art. And eventually it was like, what do I do with all this soap? Like, you know, you're surrounded by soap and you, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> um, yeah. So that's how I got started. And that's kind of, that's kind of what kept me going for a while. And it kept, it kept me sane and now I can make an income off of it. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it was just a good outlet. Are you full-time soap now? Um, sort of, not really. Some of my friends started kind of poking at me and being like, well, why don't you just do the soap full time? And I was like, well, I'm not ready for that. Like, I don't think my business is ready for that. I don't think I have the, the not popularity, but I don't have the sales to do that. Mm -hmm. And people poking at me and <laughs> now I'm kind of considering not, not having a job. I mean, with not having a, a different part-time job. You said that this was kind of something that you found to focus you when you were going through this, this point in your life where you weren't quite sure what was going on. You were just manic for a year. Is it still something that you use like as a tool or is it just something that's built now into your lifestyle and just kind of helps keep you on track? It was kind of built into my lifestyle for a while, but, um, you know, after mania, you hit a big depression. And so once I hit the big depression, it was, it fell out like a regular part of my life and started being something that I had to force myself to do because I didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, now I would definitely say it's a tool to help keep me. Um, I don't use it as a tool like I did before. Like it's not keeping me on track. It's not helping me focus on life in general. Now it's more like the business side of things is, is okay. helping and the making part of it is the part that is like that I enjoy that I like seek out so it's not like it's it's not propelling me but it's like my desire just to design and have fun is what's propelling the business now I've never used glitter and I really want to but I, I just gal, she will convince you she will be your <laughs> glitter coach I'm like you know what there is a glitter for every one there is at least one glitter that everybody could get on board with. And it's like, I feel like it's my job to help them find it. Ooh. She's like a glitter doula. I will find the right glitter for you. Because it doesn't need to be obnoxious glitter. It doesn't even need to be like that really, really reflective kind. The good glitter um, actually has some, uh, it's not matte finish, but it's like a satin finish. So if you want okay. like a subtle thing, it's, yeah, I don't know if you knew that either, um, but yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, it's, not shiny and metallic <laughs> thing, but like it works well and blends and I, I work with it. But like if you use only natural, if you're going for a more natural look, that would probably be really good. Oh, well, know. there's glitter, right? I mean, it's biodegradable and it's made from recyclable materials. So I think I can get away with that. Yeah. I just, I put the natural thing because, well, I mean, it's something I believe in, but it's also something that like where I live, that is my audience. Um, I'm part of a group that's a sustainability group, right? And so that it's all about natural and and that whole thing. But I will also show up to those like markets and like glittery shoes and bright purple shirt and like I I do the opposite of I think what people expect out of me. But you know, I would not fight you. Royalty the, the same way. Hmm? Katie from Royalty is the same way. She always talks about like, you know, she uses so much glitter. But she's like, I will not wear glitter makeup or clothes. I don't have a single glitter thing in my life oh, wow. other than my soap. But my soap needs glitter. That is so funny. Maybe soap is like an outlet for like things that you can't do or things that you wouldn't do in real life. It's like an outlet. Like you get to experience something that you wouldn't normally experience. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me give you a hack. Are you ready? I'm ready not a plastic tablecloth because you can't clean it very well and you have to just keep buying it, right? And they're like a dollar, right? Not that big of a deal. But mm -hmm. after you've gone through tablecloth after tablecloth after tablecloth, it adds up. So yeah. instead, get yourself, I'll uh, we'll grab it so I can show you. you know? She loves a good hack. I do. <laughs> I mean, who Come on. But we got like, it. wiggled in her seat. She's like this. <laughs> look, 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 look. A two foot by one foot ceramic tile. Ooh. Oh. From Home Depot. And then you can wash it. You can put it on, I put it on top of a towel on top of another surface. That way I'm not scratching the surface. Okay. Is that what you use for your backdrop for photography? Yes. Yes, I do. And I just make sure that my lighting is indirect so that it's not like immediately reflecting off of it. <laughs>
So, okay, so you use natural colorants. Do you only use essential oils as well? I do, at least in my soap. I make candles too, and then I buy like all the fragrances in the world because I don't buy them for my soap. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, like I said, it's like the, with the color, I see you guys using so much color and I'm like jealous about it, but I'm also like, no, stick to your brand. And then I hear all these awesome fragrances and I'm like, mm, I want to, I want to do that. Hard, but, yeah. Yeah, I just apply it. I have a question. Yeah. Do you feel that there's room within one brand to do both? I do feel like there's room. I feel like that because I don't think there's a one customer group that loves soap, right? Like in my town, there's a lot of hipster people, but there's also, it's a college town. So there's also like a lot of rave culture here too. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of like people that want that really bright color and a lot of people that want that natural thing. And I feel like it's like that in a lot of places. And if you have a quality product, then those two groups of people and whatever other groups of people are all going to want or all might want to supply from the same person because it's a quality product, right? They're not going to want to, does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So you think that there is room for that within one brand. So why, what's your, why, why won't you let yourself if you want to? I have, this is something I've been like struggling with lately because I thought about maybe doing half and half, um, just so appeal to different markets, but I'm, my worry is that I will spread too far. Like I get into all of these different projects and I can't focus on just one or they turn out like maybe half ass and I can't take half ass. Like I just keep going, keep going until it's, you know, perfect. But I worry that I will run myself ragged trying to appeal to too large of a market. So what I'm hearing you say is that you would do, so like what you do now, that amount of work, then you would do that same amount of work with this other type of soaping for a other type of demographic and you'd be spread too thin because you're doing twice the amount of work. That's what I'm thinking. So what if you just made what you wanted to make when you wanted to make it and call it a day and do the exact same amount of work you do now? Well, that you would make have much as many unfinished projects because you're always into it. That would make way too much sense to like <laughs> to <operate. laughs> I know, no. right? How dare you yeah. use logic, Jazz? Well, that's the thing is like, I I have extreme anxiety about being pigeonholed anywhere in life. And that's not limited to my business. And if I make landscape soaps so much that it's expected or rainbow soaps or natural soaps that it's expected, it will stress me out. It won't be fun. And I won't want to do it anymore. So Ooh. my brand is just, I'm going to make literally whatever I want when I want it. And if I do it with a great recipe and I do it so that it's visually stimulating or calming has a, has an important message, whatever is like really special to me, then I'm putting my whole heart into it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I do exactly what I want to do when I want to do it. And I never leave it unfinished because I always want to do it. Yeah. And, yeah. I can see I, and it I is like from a demographic, like I'm not going to work twice as hard. I'm going to work like the, the most that I can while maintaining self care and mental health and everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a demographic out there for whatever you want to make. Like don't yeah. hold your creativity back because you're worried about your brand. Cause you, they'll be open to it. I think, or you'll start well, a new demographic. That's exactly what my issue is right now. Like I was just having this conversation or this topic of conversation with my husband, like last week because I do feel like I kind of want to branch out into something else but the way that I got the way that I like weaseled my way into the market here was by like really sticking to a niche and it makes me nervous that because most of my sales are in person not online so it, it makes me nervous that I'm gonna get um not offend people but that that if I step outside my niche I won't have the business that I had before I think that's that's mostly what's holding me back is that like fear about that but I do internally, I want to do more. I want to do stuff with color. I want to try different designs and I just haven't made the time for it because I've been holding myself back. But that's also like, you're pushing me because <laughs> that's something that I do in my life is I get nervous. Like I get nervous about other people's reactions and I do let that hold me back. Yeah. I, I wonder, so I wonder if it might be beneficial at the next market or something to to ask your customers that question. Like, hey, you know, all of my soaps right now are naturally colored using botanicals or infused oils, but I'm thinking about using micas. 
are you, what do you think about that? Like, let's discuss what a mica is and how you feel about that being in your soap. And I think that they'll give you the answer that you're looking for. So if all of your customers are like, absolutely not, no fragrances, no artificial, unnatural coloring or whatever, mm. then you, you have your answer. So like, yes, you can initiate all those conversations. That would give me complete burnout. I would never be able to do that at a market. No, I can't do that. So if you want to do that, do that. I get really hard burnout when I talk about stuff like that because they're not going to know what the hell you're talking about when you're really right, yeah, explaining right. things. And I'm just like, I don't want to teach a hundred people about my profession. So what I would do is I would put it in like layman's terms, do a printout of like comparing my original, my regular soap to what this soap is. And I would say, just make whatever soap you want, bring it with you to market and just test it out. See if people buy it, see what they say about it. And you can put that educational print out like in a stand <laughs> if they want to learn about what the differences are and then you know what I mean see what happens I love getting feedback from different people like I'm I'm loving getting your guys's feedback yeah. um and That's it's giving so me the idea. <laughs> it's giving me the idea I think maybe the shops that I'm in I can keep my like all natural soap in there and then start experimenting outside of that with the stuff that I want to experiment with and because I don't think Micah is Micah's fine. At, it's just a yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't see an issue with it. Yeah. The no. like, I like. I think essential oils I'll probably stick with because I actually really like formulating them. And mm -hmm. yeah, I do well, really like those. But the color you, thing, yeah. you can formulate fragrance oils in the exact same way. I have I have body products too, so I use essential oils and I I formulate them too, and that's so much fun. But you do the same thing with the fragrance oils. Like sometimes I mix two or three of them. Mm -hmm. Um, if I know they're well behaved anyway, but I don't know. And it's like cheaper, <laughs> way cheaper. And it sticks a lot longer, a lot stronger. I love that. But I love the idea of being cheaper, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it is crazy cheaper because you don't even have to put that much in, I feel like. And it's strong. Mm -hmm. Essential and oil like, burns off, right? Like with so the many. Well, and that you can't get essential oils for a lot of fragrances that you're looking for. So, for example, mm -hmm. there's no vanilla essential oil. That is not a thing. It doesn't exist. There are perfume oils and fragrance oils that are vanilla, but not essential. So for certain flavor profiles or scent profiles, not flavor, we're not eating this. Um, you just can't achieve it using an essential oil. So just opening yourself up to being able to use fragrance oils will open up yeah. the doors to everything. But you don't want the floodgates. I'll also tell you that I started off with only essential oils also. I only wanted to do essential oils and natural colorants. And then I realized, oh, I'm too extra for that. I'm too curious and I'm too much of an artist to be limited within um, my chosen art form. That makes me feel pigeonholed and it just, yeah. just hell no. But also you know, I use essential oil and fragrance oil blend too. So you can put that on the label. There is essential oil in it and they see that more mm -hmm. than it'll be the fragrance oil and it's still going to be a selling point too mm -hmm. all right <sighs> do you have any questions jazz i do i just god i just gotta wait like today i'm really tired i just got a wave of like <laughs> probably that thing man <laughs> no this is keeping me going <laughs> Like the whole thing, I'm gonna have to get more. I probably look like a freaking alcoholic. I probably should have just had a cup and not like a wine glass. But I like to feel fancy when I drink my tang. <laughs> uh, That's just awesome. But <laughs> like our viewers who don't know that, maybe we should include the part in the beginning of how I don't sure. drink <laughs> because I'm just like, oh, oh. yeah, but like it looks almost like orange wine. Have you ever had orange wine? No, but that reminds me of an episode of Schitt's Creek when they want to make a Moira Rose A, a Moira Rose A. Do, does anybody watch Schitt's Creek? I don't watch Schitt's Creek. I couldn't get into it. I'm also the kind of person who couldn't get into The Office or Parks and Rec. I... The Office? Come on. God, Girl, Robin. listen. Everybody loved The Office. Dunder Mifflin everywhere. The, the <laughs> memes everything i need you to explain yourself so that i don't have okay. this like, lump in my throat okay so when the office was huge i was working in an office with a ton of office fans so of course i was like fuck that i'm not watching 
It was like a rebellion. Now you're not, you're not doing that anymore. So now you can love it. Now you can go back and realize how amazing it is. I don't have time to watch The Office. Okay. Fair. okay. <laughs> but when you do, or if I'm going to, I would watch the original version, not the American version. No, I understand every grown adult in America has watched The Office and loves it. I get it. I'm not that person. My husband and I both. I will say that I, I will accept your horrible reaction to this show that I absolutely love because I found out recently that there's so many people that just hate it. Friends. Oh, what? I love I love Friends. It's, it's right? bad. It's bad. There's so many problems. Not with bad. It, but it's so Take good. Take it back. No, no, no. I mean, like, if you go back and rewatch it, you're like, ooh, this is. Oh, but that's because it's the 90s. I know, I know. So it's fine. Just but freaking the watch it. The acting and the delivery of the lines, like the timing, that's that holds. It's the writing that there are some things where we've evolved quite a bit in the last decade, like a lot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there are some cringe moments because of the topic, but like, I don't know. That's just so funny. It's so great. Mm -hmm. Every time I need to pivot, you know I'm screaming, pivot, 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 pivot. <laughs> but like people would tell me that like I'm a good split of like Phoebe and Chandler. That I'm like really sarcastic, but I'm also just like really kind of flighty, kind of ditzy, but like in an endearing way, but also really grounded and like questioning the status quo that yeah. Phoebe does. I feel but, like, like that's a very good um definition, I, a very good representation yeah, yeah. And i'm like sarcastic and i just think everything is like shit kind of <laughs> whatever like chill <laughs> hey Alyssa, if you could describe yourselves in the reference the frame of reference as friends characters who would you be <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> right oh because God. you've got you've got janet you've got oh, um why is that the first one got, you came up with janet. Yeah. That's no, I don't. No, I mean, like, you also have others besides Those the original friends. Words. Okay, you start with Rachel. You start with Alyssa, not Janice. I apologize, Alyssa. That was no. inappropriate. It felt a little rude. I'm not gonna. Hi. Lie. <laughs> right. Like, let's list off all the characters Listen. you don't like, and you can choose from those. I'm sorry <laughs> if you were offended by you my public apology words. and a resignation. <laughs> I think I'm probably a mixture between Monica because I can be very like anal retentive and Chandler because of my sense of humor, because I can be a real asshole sometimes with my sense of humor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm into it. I think I'm unfortunately like a mixture of Monica, Monica and Ross. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's That's bad. Um, Ooh, okay, because, like, because um, Monica, because yes, I'm very much like rule follower. This is what we do, period. And I like, I ace everything. I'm a 4.0 student, like, period. I'm, I am the person who sucks up. Okay. That's just what it is. <clears throat> and then Ross. Okay, now I'm judging you. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I'm judging myself. I just called myself a mixture of Monica and Ross. So. But, but they're great characters. They're leading characters. And then, okay, so Ross, because I'm, this, this is going to sound cocky, but like I'm, I'm very intelligent and very into what I'm into, period. And that's what Ross is, paleontologist. He's into it. Let's get back to Sophie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> what? I said, oh, yeah, there's that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you, you have a bar with you at all? Like your first bar or one of your first bars? I have one of my first bars, not the very first one, because once I made all that calendula, I never made it again. Mm -hmm. um, but I have this get that off there. It's just green, but it has a little pine cone on top and some little moss. I love, I love those. And this is the one that I made with oregano and lavender. So this is the second soap I ever made. Can you hold it up a little closer? So what? is that colored with green clay or what give you the coloring? It's Berlina and Corella. Cor Corella. Florella. 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 Yeah. I just made this one and it was kind of, I feel it went okay. So oh, I, yeah. tried to make, oh, I haven't made like a men's soap. I've always just had 
soap that I thought everyone would love. And yeah. I just kind of like get in the middle with a fork because I thought that looked kind of manly, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I made a little camouflage and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Like I wanted the blobs to be smaller and less like mm. expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I like it gets the point across perfectly though. What? It gets the point across perfectly. Oh, yeah. I, I, turned out right. I um, think that's absolutely beautiful. I love those two colors together. Like this olive fatigue green and like a charcoal light gray. Oh, yeah. So okay. good. Okay, so re bar. this is an actual indigo bar. So oh, it's yeah. blue. And it has um, reindeer moss on the top and little ring of rock. So I can see. Ooh, yeah. So the top the yeah. like... hmm? reindeer moss. Yeah, reindeer moss. It's actually from Iceland. And then these little rocks I got from um, a local river. And I call it river rock. Mm. Of course you do. It's it so rock. cute. <laughs> and what's the scent? Oh um, this one is fir, neroli, and lavender. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah. So, so and actually oh, neroli, I've heard it a lot. Wait, I've never smelled it before. Huh? What's neroli? I've seen it a lot, but I've never gotten something with it in it. I keep being curious. A really sweet smell to it. And it's got like like it's kind of earthy and floral and a little bit sweet, but it's actually like ridiculously expensive. So I don't use it anymore. I came up with a mixture of like benzoin, pedigrin, and um grapefruit. And one other thing, patchouli. Okay, so all of mm. those to mix and they smell very similar to neroli. So I was able, I was super proud of that because I was like, I can't keep using neroli. There's no point in using it because it's so good. Yeah. yeah. I've heard about but, the benzoin. Is it benzoin or benzoin or do you guys know? I call it benzoin. It's spelled benzoin. Let's go with yeah. that. I have benzoin powder because I want to, because okay. it's known to be able to like smell like vanilla without, you know, without vanillin. Yeah. Um, but I haven't used it yet. <laughs> I'm just so, like, why haven't I used it? I have a whole thing of it. I've done oh. some research recently on making your own herbal incense. Have you guys ever done that? Herbal mm -hmm. incense? What is so that? So you take, so benzoin or benzoin, however you want to say it, is a resin similar yeah. to frankincense or myrrh. Um, and so you, you got it ground already, but you can also get it in chunks and then grind it up and you add your own herbal blend to it. And then you can buy these like charcoal briquettes that are like little circles and they're self lighting. So you light them on fire in a safe space, so like a dish with sand in it or something. And then you take a pinch of your herbal incense and you drop it onto the briquette and it burns really, really quickly, um, yes. but it burns quite a bit of smoke. So you can, you can sense or fragrance like an entire room pretty quickly. And then also you can do it like it's a, you can have magical applications to it, but you can also just do it as like a self-care kind of thing, or if you want to instill a certain feeling into a room. Mm -hmm. huh. I, like I actually the essential oil, like I use it in an oil. I've never seen it in a powder and it's like really, really thick. It's one of those that you like took the yeah. ball up down. It's like, yeah. Rip. Yep. Yeah. I think it was um, maybe Wholesale Supplies Plus that they have it in a powder form. Oh. Yeah, I, I looked into the resin and I was like, you know, because I have oak moss essential oil and I'm like, like that. Mm. Have you guys had oak moss essential oil before? Mm -mm. It's like that. It's like a resin. It's, it's like really thick, you upside down. Like to <laughs> mix it in or whatever, I have to like dip something in it and like then stir it with that stick and for like five minutes till it dissolves. And it's like, I could, I could put it into like a carrier oil and like diffuse it or whatever, but. Like exactly how much I'm putting in and not have to worry about like what percentage this is to, that I'm putting it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get it. But I was like, that's, uh, I don't want another one of those. But cool. Yeah. Um, so now rapid fire. Got it. Okay. So you have 10 seconds to answer each of these questions. I feel like we need to tighten that up. I feel like there's not enough pressure. We need, oh! like an, answer. We need an answer, not an explanation. Okay, I can I can aim for that. Okay, fragrance supplier, and in your case, it can be essential oil supplier, if you had to choose one. Right now, it's a place called Original Essential Oils. It's like a brand new place. Cool. I'm gonna put that in the description. Robin, rapid fire, rapid fire. I'm sorry, I had to write it down. Jeez, I wanted to explain so bad and I didn't. How'd you know the rules? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay. Um, colorant supplier, or in your case, botanicals. I go to all different places, honestly. Okay. Oh, you know what? No, and George. That's my favorite. Okay. Um, how about for your bulk supplies? So like oils, butters, lye? Essential Depot. Okay. Um, glitter or no glitter? I want to say glitter. I'm going to say no glitter, and I'm going to say in the future, glitter. Gotcha. Yeah. So we'll we'll circle back in six months and do this again. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. Um, high top or low top? Low top. Okay. Um, top swirl, top texture, or topping? Texture. Okay. Mm, was there another one, Jess? Gone from memory. Uh, yeah. I'm all right now. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. And your syrup. What temperature is it? Well, nobody knows their temperature. I don't want <laughs> degrees. Okay. I want like, is it cold or is it hot? Like refrigerated or warm. Yeah. Like okay. It's room temperature. That's fair too. I found out that a lot of people who said cold thought you meant room temperature, like unheated. No, I meant cold. My words mean. I know. I know. <laughs> But it's what that meant in their head, like hot or cold. They thought, do I heat it up or is it just oh, do I not do nothing to it? That's what their brain processed it as. I'm like, okay, I can get that. But like I refrigerated, I think we should say refrigerated. Oh, <laughs> like, there's been like three or four people who told me that, like, oh, no, I thought you meant. <laughs> no. like, I, okay, good to know. I, I could try it cold. It was kind of weird. Like I, I always have mine at room temperature. And I knew that you guys have been talking about that. And when we were first moving into my dad's, I was putting food in the fridge and I opened the door and there was syrup in the door. And like, I grew up with this man, obviously, and our syrup thing. cupboard and I opened the fridge and there's syrup in the door. And I was like, what the heck is this? So, <laughs> so I tried it and it is good. But if you put it on the waffles, it makes it cold. So I had like a little dish with cold syrup that I was like dipping and eating and it is good, but I think it's a mood. Like my normal is going to be room temperature. Got it. Where can somebody buy your products or find you online? Oh, I have a website. It's called my evergreen essential with an S essentials.com. Mm -hmm. And then I have my Instagram, um, which is evergreen essential co. And then if people are local, um, there's an apothecary called living earth herbs. There's another apothecary called, um, river roots. And there's a brand new store called Bellingham Handmade. And my soap is in all three of those stores. That's awesome. Yeah. Well done. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, here on Soap Dish. Again, my name is Robin. You can find me nest.soapery on Instagram. This is my friend Jazz, my lovely co-host. You can find her at rogue.mafia.grooming.co on Instagram. And thank you so much to Alyssa for joining us here today. Yay. We appreciate it. And that's it. So thank you so much, guys. We will see you next time.